The U.S. Women's Open has a grand old tradition of American champions. Mickey Wright. Babe Zaharias. Joanne Carner. But in recent years, there has been an invasion of champions from distant shores. The last American champion was Patty Sheehan in 1994. Who would win the chance to hoist the trophy this year? The United States Golf Association presents the 1998 United States Women's Open Championship from Black Wolf Run Golf Course in Kohler, Wisconsin. Leader of the pack. The spectacular beauty of America's heartland and the patriotic spirit of the 4th of July weekend provided the backdrop for America's top women golfers to reclaim the game's greatest prize, the United States Women's Open Championship. Five times in the last 11 years, a foreign player had been crowned champion. Last year, Allison Nicholas of England won in dramatic fashion on the 72nd hole, and the diminutive champion was back to lead an armada of international players gathered at Black Wolf Run Golf Course, more than 6,400 yards of treachery nestled in the Wisconsin countryside. Swedish sensation and two-time U.S. Women's Open champion Annika Sorenstam, playing some of her best golf, was a pre-championship favorite. Fellow Swede and former U.S. Women's Open champion Lisa Lott Neumann was expected to contend, as was Korean newcomer Sari Pak, who had already won a major this year. Long-hitting Laura Davies of England was keen on adding a second U.S. Women's Open title to her 1987 championship, and Australian star Kari Webb was gunning for her first. American hopes were carried once again by perennial Women's Open bridesmaid Nancy Lopez, whose runner-up finish last year marked the fourth time the Hall of Famer had finished second. The season's leading money winner, Donna Andrews, and Pat Hurst, another 1998 major winner, were strong contenders to place the Women's Open crown in homegrown hands for the first time since Patty Sheehan won in 1994. And so, the stage was set. Legend has it that more than a century ago, an Indian chief named Black Wolf was the most important tribal chief in Wisconsin. Measuring 6,412 yards, the second longest course in women's open history, Black Wolf Run, named in the Chief's honor, was the devilish creation of celebrated golf architect Pete Dye. Each hole presented a different challenge, massive bunkers, rolling fairways, undulating greens, and the meandering Sheboygan River. The perfect choice for hosting the first U.S. Women's Open in Wisconsin. Just years after it opened, Black Wolf Run welcomed an opening day record crowd of more than 21,000 fans. There were new and familiar faces to watch, Leslie Spaulding, Sari Pak, Donna Andrews, Allison Nicholas, Lisa Lott Neumann, and Annika Sorenstam. The early bird got the early lead. Playing in the first group, Leslie Spaulding finished at two under after making a closing birdie. Sari Pak parred the final 11 holes to be an opening day contention. With a 33, Donna Andrews had tied for low front nine score, but needed this long putt on the 17th hole to stay close to the lead. The troubles of defending champion Allison Nicholas were typified by this watery grave on her second shot to the 18th. On the other hand, the 1988 Women's Open champion Lisa Lott Neumann had this birdie try at the 18th, and at one under, Neumann would be just one of 10 players to break par. After a disastrous front nine featuring a triple bogey on the fifth hole, Annika Sorenstam rallied, coaxing in this 30-foot birdie on the 16th. Using a seven wood, Sorenstam was all over the flag stick on the 18th. This was from about 18 feet down the slope. That made it five birdies on the round. 
Laura Davies started the championship not feeling so well about her game, but that changed after hitting shots like this all day. A tap in birdie and a share of the lead. Well, I actually played very well this year, but I always seem to mess up around. So all day today, I was pretty nervous. I was going to mess things up coming down the last few holes. And, you know, I actually made one up on 18, which was a bit of a surprise. Both Annika and I both birdied the hole, so that's a tough hole. Sentimental favorite Nancy Lopez could add the support of husband Ray Knight to her fan following. But nothing went right for Lopez. Out of the rough and into the massive green side bunker on the seventh hole meant another bogey to go to three over. On the picturesque par 3 13, Lopez's hopes sank even further when her ball went into Swan Lake after an unlucky bounce. Totaled up, the day's frustration made for an unsightly 77. On the other hand, there was nothing prettier than this sweet swing by Helen Alfredson on the 152-yard par 3 eighth. The opening day ace was a sign of things to come. One of the last to tee off, Kim Williams was making an early charge, having birdied the first and fourth holes coming to the par 3 6. For birdie from about 10 feet. Williams was now at three under par, and that's how she would finish. At the end of the first round, Kim Williams and Laura Davies were atop a crowded leaderboard. Fellow Swedes and former Women's Open champions Lisa Lott Neumann and Annika Sorenstam were in contention. The 1981 champion Pat Bradley was at even par, as was veteran Dale Egling playing in her 22nd Women's Open. Amateur Jenny Shasiraporn, last year's low amateur finisher, was only four shots back, but a host of prominent names, among them Kelly Robbins, Nancy Lopez, and Michelle McGann, were far back. Record crowds turned out, overrunning Black Wolf Run. They were everywhere, perched on rocks, filling up the natural amphitheater at the 18th, and it was all a result of years of hard work, said Judy Bell, past president of the USGA. For the last 10 years, we've worked hard at making this happen. We've been, we've been proactive instead of reactive and waiting for it to happen. We realize that we have one of the greatest sporting championships in the world here. And we want everybody to come and watch and see it and know it because it's a great experience. The Women's Committee is a pretty remarkable group. They made a decision to really concentrate on this championship to get attendance up and to, to get as much exposure as they could. The thanks go to the USGA Women's Committee, which is really the eyes and ears of women's golf in this country. The natural amphitheater at the 14th Green was one of the great vantage points on the course, but it was back at the 8th that the fans got to see a really spectacular sight when Clarissa Childs used a 5-iron to score the second ace at the par 3. It was the 15th hole-in-one in U.S. Women's Open history. Veteran Dottie Pepper was upbeat about her chances going into the weekend, even after this narrow miss on the 18th. I was surprised the ball went as far by as it did, but when it crawled over the right edge, I just couldn't believe it missed. If you can just hang in there long enough and, and be forthright enough to stay on your game plan, that, that you can do some damage in the long haul. Ten long years had passed since Lisa Lott Neumann had first won the U.S. Women's Open. But with putts like this, and a birdie tap-in to go to two under, the wait for a second championship might soon be over. 
First round, co-leader Laura Davies relinquished her spot at the top on the treacherous fifth, finding the bunker on her second shot. After blasting over the green into the water, Davies had this long putt to salvage a bogey. A double bogey to drop to two under. Sari Pock's bid to win a second major this year was coming into focus. This was from 12 feet for birdie and the lead at four under par. First round co-leader Kim Williams opened with a double bogey on the first hole and ended by missing this par putt on the 18th. Williams limped in with an 81 and was at seven over for the championship. Donna Andrews also had her struggles. This was for par. And she dropped to one over. Pat Hurst was in danger of losing sight of her first U.S. Women's Open crown. After being short with her fourth shot to the fifth, she would go on to make bogey. After dropping two shots on the previous hole, Laura Davies looked to get one back with a six iron to about 15 feet. Davies turned around her fortunes with the birdie, but it turned out to be her last on the day. Championship leader Sari Pak managed to save par after this delicate bunker shot on seven. There were, however, only memories to save from last year's epic duel between Nancy Lopez and Allison Nicholas. In 1997, Allison Nicholas and Nancy Lopez treated golf fans to a thrilling final round duel. Nicholas was sharp early, holding out this approach shot. Lopez, however, could only agonize over missed chances. Late in the round, Nicholas stumbled allowing the people's favorite, Lopez, to get to within one shot coming to the closing holes. Then it was down to two players, one last hole to determine the champion. Lopez had to make this birdie to force the playoff. Nicholas tapped in for par, and the celebration began as the diminutive English woman hoisted women's golf's biggest prize. There would be no fight to the finish this time for Nancy Lopez, just a fight to simply finish. At the end, she bravely surrendered, missing the cut at 18 over, her worst U.S. Women's Open ever. There were few bright moments for Alice and Nicholas as well. She barely missed the ace on the eighth on her way to missing the cut at 12 over par. An approaching storm forced play to be halted leaving fans and players to wait for 51 minutes before the all clear. Immediately, Laura Davies was back in trouble, running this chip well past for another bogey.
Annika Sorenstam was having her problems as well, needing this long putt to save par on the seventh hole. While those around her were trying to save par, Sari Pak was trying for another birdie on the ninth hole. A Black Wolf Run signature, a huge bunker around an elevated green, presented a big problem to Lisa Lot Neumann. Neumann made it out of the bunker, but couldn't make par and slipped to one under. Amateur Brenda Corey Keene was trying to stay in step with the leaders, but slipped back to one under by making bogey here. Things were looking up for Chris Johnson. This perfect tee shot set up a birdie to get the veteran back to even par. Sari Pack was a little less than perfect with her drive on the par for 11th hole, and it would leave her looking at bogey. Barb Mucha was back in contention after a string of birdies on 10, 12, and 13, and she would come up inches short of another one with this putt on the 14th. The severity of break, slope, and the size of Black Wolf Run greens was exemplified by this putt by Lisa Lot Neumann. Shorter putts were equally formidable. Laura Davies missed this seven footer to drop another stroke. Everybody was struggling on the slick, undulating greens. Sari Pak three putted from 15 feet for her second bogey in three holes. Qualifier Vari Mackay had no reason to hide today. The Scottish lass already had three birdies on the back of nine and had this long try for another on the 17th. She would get par. On the 14th, Donna Andrews had this bogey. She dropped to 3 0. Kari Mackay had plenty of reason to smile walking off the 18th green. In her first U.S. Women's Open, she was very much in contention at the halfway mark. With rounds of 72 and 70, Chris Johnson was tied with Mackay in third place, along with Dottie Pepper. An awkward stance, a hot shot coming out of the rough to a firm green flanked by water would mean more trouble for Laura Davies. This testing bogey putt on 14 prevented further damage, but Laura Davies still wasn't very pleased. She completed her frustrating round at one over par. Sari Pak had this lengthy birdie putt on the closing hole. Close was good enough. 
and she was the first one to finish in red numbers. Pack was the championship leader, but knew she hadn't won anything yet. <laughs> I'm not finished yet. I have two days left. So just, I want to finish top lane this time, so I don't want to push this time myself. Lisa Lott Neumann was indecisive on her second shot. I was sort of in between clubs and obviously the course has been really rolling out today. Um, the greens are pretty hard and just got a little scared on the shot in there and uh, left it short of the green. The scoreboard told the story. Neumann needed to get down in two to stay one stroke behind Sari Pak. Neumann was left with this 10-footer for par. The veteran knew all too well the significance of making that final putt. The putt was huge. Um, it sort of, if someone would have told me to take two under in the beginning of the week after Thursday and Friday, I would definitely have taken that and gone home. So um, I'm very pleased with that. Sari Pak was nursing a one-shot lead over Lisa Lott Neumann and was halfway to her second major of the year. Amateur Jenny Shasiraporn was at one over along with Laura Davies. Hollis Stacy was at plus two, playing in her 29th consecutive Women's Open, equaling the record of Kathy Whitworth. After missing the cut last year, two-time champion Annika Sorenstam was in for the weekend at plus four. But missing the cut were former champions Betsy King, Meg Mallon, and last year's champion Allison Nicholas. Kids of all ages were admitted free with an adult as part of the USGA Junior Golf Club program, now in its eighth year. Interactive fun and exhibits were part of the fun-filled day. Children got a USGA cap and even a hot dog, making it a great way to spend the day at the U.S. Women's Open. The fans got into the patriotic spirit as the 4th of July blew in on winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Playing in the last group, Lisa Lott Neumann had a pitching wedge into the steeply elevated first green. This was from 35 feet for birdie. And Neumann had a share of the lead with her playing partner, Sari Pott. Pock was in immediate trouble on the opening hole. This was for bogey. And now Pock was one shot back of Neumann. It was like match play. And at the par five second, Pock nearly rolled in her chip. She got a nice hand from the fans and walked off with a birdie and a share of the lead. Again, to an elevated green, Neumann, with a 7-iron, found the flagstick through the wind. From 9 feet for birdie and the lead. Dottie Pepper had the eye of the tiger, but the wind was taking the bite out of her game. Into the tightly guarded fifth green, Pepper found only trouble. Get on the ground. 
she could only shoot a helpless look skyward. Coming into focus, Chris Johnson was seeking to get a shot back at the sixth after making bogey at the second and fifth holes. The fans saluted the 20-year veteran. Par 3 13th is called Swan Lake, and there was no lovelier shot struck during the entire championship than this six iron by Brandy Burton. Go in, go in. Burton picked up the third ace of the championship, a U.S. Women's Open record. Smiles quickly turned into something else for Brenda Corey Keene, who wasn't able to coax this par putt in for her second bogey of the round. Fari Mackay didn't seem ruffled by the wind. This birdie attempt was from 25 feet. Mackay was now at plus one. And after being short with an eight iron, Lisa Lot Neumann had a 60 footer for birdie on the eight. Too strong, and she was left with a five footer coming back. An uncharacteristic three putt for one of the game's top putters to drop back to two under par. To save par at the ninth, Chris Johnson. Johnson made the turn, plus two for the round and the championship. On the longest hole of the course, Vari Mackay snap hooked her drive. She went on to make bogey. The tenth proved even more troublesome for Sari Pock. Sari pulled a three wood and got a terrible roll in the bunker. From a clumsy stance, Pock managed only to advance the ball into the greenside bunker. Pock finished up walking away with a double bogey seven and was now two shots back of Neumann. But her playing partner gave back a shot on 11, missing another short par putt from five feet for another three putt green. So, early on the back nine, Lisa Lott Neumann was holding on to a one stroke lead, but Sari Pock, Chris Johnson, and Vari Mackay were all within easy striking distance. There was nothing wrong with Vari Mackay's putting stroke. This was for a birdie on 12 from about 60 feet. Oh yes, at one over, Mackay was within two shots of the lead and she could hardly believe it. The 12th is called Gotcha, and the par four got Lisa Lot Neumann when her six iron bounced into the massive green side bunker. Neumann went on to bogey, missing a five-foot par putt. Vari Mackay was still on fire with her putter, making this 10-footer for her third consecutive birdie to forge a three-way tie for the lead. She was tied with Lisa Lot Neumann and Sari Pop. Lisa Lot Neumann's string of bogeys stretched to three on the par three 13th hole. She knew this shot was no good, and she didn't bother to watch the ball disappear into the heavy rough. Neumann would go ahead to two putt from 18 feet to drop to one over par. But Sari Pock was having her own struggles with the putter. She botched this three-footer for another bogey. 
Now the championship's unexpected leader, Bari Mackay, was 90 yards from the green on 14. Go. Nice shot. Safely on. A birdie attempt from 15 feet for a two-shot lead. consecutive birdies for the former Stanford All-American playing in her first U.S. Women's Open. With one look at the leaderboard, it was plain to see how the rough conditions were sending scores soaring. Downhill from about 15 feet, Sari Pock neatly navigates the double-breaking putt for a much-needed birdie on the 14th hole. But Lisa Lot Neumann found more sand and more trouble on the 15th. Not bad, but not good enough to prevent her fifth consecutive bogey. With her older brother Joey keeping a close eye, Jenny Shasiraporn was keeping contact with the leaders. She saved her best shot for last. Jenny rifled a five wood from 190 yards to within a few feet of the hole on the 18th hardest hole on the course this day, yielding just one birdie before Shasiraporn got number two. It was all so unbelievable. The second shot, I don't even, I mean, I can't even remember what was going through my mind because my arms felt like jello, <laughs> along with the putt too, so I think I'm still shaking. After back-to-back -back bogeys, Chris Johnson was safely below the hole on the par 3 17th. She confidently rolled in the birdie, but would give back the shot at the 18th to finish at 5 over for the championship. After five bogeys in a row, Lisa Lot Neumann stopped the carnage by getting this five-foot birdie to climb back to two over par. After making double bogey on the 17th, 23-year-old Barry Mackay talked like a seasoned veteran about having to keep her composure on a U.S. Women's Open course. Conditions are tough out there and everybody's going to make mistakes. You just have to take your medicine and keep going and keep believing in what you're doing and that's really the attitude I tried to take into today. From 210 yards with a five wood, Lisa Lot Neumann on the 18th. But Lisa Lot hit into the water that runs almost the entire length of the 421 yard finishing hole. After a drop, Neumann had a chip from about 35 yards to save par. Wow, what a finish. That was uh, probably one of the better shots I've ever hit, I think. And just at the perfect time, too. It, I think it meant a lot for the momentum for me for tomorrow. You know, instead of maybe walking off with a bogey or maybe a double bogey even, you know, just to make that save, that was huge. A bogey on the final hole mercifully ended today's ordeal for Sari Pak. So this is very windy. Then this course is a little very difficult. And today's pin like pin position like many many times too difficult to you know to hit the shot. So that's why today's really really tough day. Then long day too. Pac clung to a one shot lead over Mackay and Neumann. Amateur Jenny Shasiraporn and Chris Johnson were at five over. Barb Mucha was tied with Pat Hurst at six over. And still in contention were Donna Andrews and Tammy Green. Laura Davies was at eight over, as was Leslie Spaulding. Amateur Brenda Corey Keene was at nine over, while two-time U.S. Women's Open champion Annika Sorenstam was struggling at 12 over. With no one under par, simple survival was on the minds of the leaders entering the final round. Black Wolf Run had bared its teeth, testing every bone and fiber of the world's top women golfers.
Among the tenacious few left in contention was a familiar favorite, Lisa Lot Neumann, and three bright stars of the future, Sari Pack, Vari Mackay, and amateur Jenny Shasiraporn. And it would most likely be up to Shasiraporn and 20-year veteran Chris Johnson to hold off the challenge of their international rivals to put the championship back in American hands this 4th of July weekend. The rustic clubhouse was prime viewing space for the drama that was unfolding below. In the final groups, amateurs surprised Jenny Shasiraporn and Swedish star Lisa Lott Neumann. In the last pairing, Scottish newcomer Vari Mackay and the championship leader, South Korean star Sari Pak. The par four third hole proved pesky. Lisa Lott Neumann made bogey after sliding this par putt past. Sari Pak was in deeper trouble, having to hack her way out of the rough below the green. A little too strong, and Pak had to be part billy goat to get to her next shot. This was her fourth shot on the par four. Puck was on her way to a double bogey and a three-way tie with Mackay and Neumann for the lead. Soon, it was a two-way tie as Neumann bogeyed the fifth hole for the second time in the championship. Chris Johnson climbed to within a shot of the lead with this birdie chip that finally dropped. That great shot and her best U.S. Women's Open since a fifth place finish in 1991 gave Johnson plenty of reasons to smile. From the knee-high brush behind the seventh hole, Lisa Lott Neumann manufactured this shot. But she climbed out to manage only a bogey. After losing a shot on the fifth hole, Jenny Shasiraporn had this 25-footer. The Syraporn had the look of somebody feeling very fortunate. Disaster struck Vari Mackay on the seventh hole in a sequence that exemplified the diabolic nature of Pete Dye's creation. That's number one. That's number two. Finally, on her third try and fifth shot on the par four, Mackay got out of the cavernous bunker. When the numbers were counted up, Mackay had a seven. Her hopes of the championship dealt a bad blow. Sari Pak also bogeyed the seventh to go to plus five. So, early in the final round, playing partners Jenny Shasiraporn and Lisa Lott Neumann were clinging to a one-shot lead along with Sari Pak. Pat Hurst stayed in the picture. Pat slipped in this birdie putt from the side to get to plus seven and a chance in the closing hole. Another good chip by Chris Johnson here on the 10th gave her a reasonable eight foot birdie try. If she made it, there would be a four-way tie for the lead. Johnson now joined Neumann, Shasiraporn, and Pak for the lead. But Pak was in trouble back on the ninth. From 130 yards out of the deep rough, Pak made a very questionable decision by trying to clear the Sheboygan River. 
a watery grave, and Pack went on to make bogey and dropped back out of the lead. Wearing the home colors of the Green Bay Packers helped make Danielle Amakapani a crowd favorite. Shots like this approach were helping make her a contender. Oh, yeah. Beautiful shot. For birdie. Amakapani stayed at seven over. The 12th hole cost Chris Johnson a share of the lead. She dropped one shot back to six over par. Lisa Lot Neumann from 10 feet for par on the 11th hole. And now, Jenny Shasiraporn was the leader. Vari Mackay nudged her way back into contention by running in this birdie on 10 to get to six over. And so, with seven treacherous holes left to play, Jenny Shasiraporn had a one-shot lead and a chance to become the first amateur to win the Women's Open in 31 years. Lisa Lott Neumann never got anything going with her putter, missing this putt on 12 for her fifth bogey of the day. Sari Pock had this good chance at birdie on 11 for a share of the lead. Coming out of the rough and trying to keep the ball close to the hole proved too difficult for Vari Mackay on the 12. She went on to double bogey and fell to eight over par. The pressure of Championship Sunday might provide the answer for why Chris Johnson missed this relatively easy shot into the 14th. From there, Johnson would double bogey. All eyes were on Danielle Amakapani at the closing hole for par. So close. But she still finished at eight over and now as the leader in the clubhouse to relax and watch. This is the easiest part of what I'm doing right now. This is, uh, playing golf is the hardest thing. I'm just gonna sit and watch. There's nothing else I can do. This is, this is I, I like where I'm sitting right now. They were all watching championship leader Jenny Shasira Porn, who could have a two shot lead if she made this birdie on 14. With a chance to tie, Sari Pock had a similar narrow miss on her birdie try at the 13th. So, it was still amateur Jenny Shasiraporn up by one over Sari Pock and others close behind. The par 4 15th is called the Sand Pit. Jenny Shasiraporn found all that sand with her drive, and it led to a bogey and cost her the outright lead. From the rough on 14, Sari Pock still managed this beautiful approach shot that just made it on the green before running up to within 10 feet. This was for birdie and sole possession of first place. And the changing fortunes of the leaders were quickly posted. A chance on 16 for Jenny Shasiraporn to move back into a share of the lead. Still one stroke back going to the 17th. 
129 feet deep, the 17th green had six separate elevations. This was the target for Jenny Shasira Porn on the par three, 172 yard hole called Snapping Turtle. Well right and into the deep rough. Shasira Porn showed great touch and great nerve with her second shot. But she missed the par putt and made bogey, and a tight lip Shasira Porn knew her situation was grim. Chris Johnson on the closing hole. A tap in par, and the veteran finished at eight over, good for a share of fourth place and her best women's open show. Pat Hurst, too, put the finishing touches on her finest U.S. Women's Open by making birdie on the 18th and a share of fourth place. The championship leader, Sari Pak, however, was in trouble on the 17th. Too strong, leaving her about 10 feet for par. This was to keep her two-stroke lead. Still, she had a one-shot cushion with one to go. Thunderous applause welcomed the remarkable 20-year-old Jenny Shasira Porn to the 18th green. She was faced with this nearly impossible 45-foot birdie putt for a share of the lead. Right after I hit it, I knew I knew I got the speed speed right because um, you know it came off the putter just like I wanted it to, and um, you know I guess you know 15 feet before the cup it was it was going straight in, and um, you know I just I, I guess I just lost it there. <laughs> I didn't, it was beyond what I ever expected. Disbelief turned to smiles as she and her brother Joey traced the route of her amazing putt. Almost forgotten was Lisa Lott Neumann, who finished with a par and in second place alone, one shot back. She got a well-deserved embrace. Now it was Sari Pock's turn to be saluted by fans from far and near, coming up to the 18th. Vari Mackay finished up first, tapping in for par and a nine over for the championship. Good for a top 10 finish in her U.S. Women's Open debut. Now, all eyes were on Sari Pak. From about eight feet below the hole for birdie and the championship. But it stayed right all the way, and a dejected Sari Pak would settle for par, forcing the first playoff at the U.S. Women's Open since Patty Sheehan beat Julie Inkster in 1992. The waiting was over for Jenny Shasira Porn, still dazed by her chance to win the U.S. Women's Open as an amateur. I can't even believe it. You know, this is just way overwhelming right now. But um, it'll be it'll be awesome if if, we're not, if an amateur wins. I can't even put words to it. First time you her tomorrow, so I I hear that she's same age, 20 years old. Maybe it look we're friends, like just maybe practice round on other tournaments, so it might feel more comfortable. Two 20-year-olds, one would make history. Sari Pak could become the youngest U.S. Women's Open champion. Jenny Shasira Porn could become both the youngest champion and the first amateur to win since Catherine Lacoste in 1967. Here was golf at its purest, player versus player. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. 
Welcome to the playoff, the 18-hole playoff of the 53rd U.S. Women's Open Championship conducted by the United States Golf Association. The players are Jenny Chisiraporn of Timonium, Maryland, and Sari Park of Daejeon, Korea. Play away, please. Jenny Chisiraporn drew ahead first, rolling in this chip for birdie. A surefire way to break the tension. On the 522-yard par-5 second, Shasiraporn was in ideal location for her third shot. From about 10 feet and a two-shot lead. Two holes, two birdies for the Duke senior. For a grim Sari Pak, matters got worse on the par four third hole. She needed this par. But she dropped another stroke. Three holes, three strokes lost. The perilous fifth hole was the most difficult through the championship. But here was Shasira Porn for another birdie. Yes. Brother Jimmy celebrated. Now through five holes, Jenny Shasiraporn led by four shots. But there, on the hole called Mercy, Shasiraporn found none today. In the, hole. the hole had not played particularly hard through the championship, and Shasiraporn had parred the last three days. That hurt. After having to take a drop, one member of the family was looking for some divine help. However, Big Sister badly misread the putt, and she would stumble in with a triple bogey six. But Sari Pak failed to build on the possible momentum swing by lipping out the par putt on eight to fall two shots behind. Both players bogeyed the ninth, and at the turn, Jenny Shasiraporn had a two-stroke lead. Hawk was in perfect position to aim for the flag on 11. Well-deserved applause. And there was a bit livelier bounce in her step. This was for her first birdie on the day and to have the lead to one stroke. There would be no white flag of surrender. On the 12th, and a second consecutive birdie to pull even. It was now all tied, just how the two started walking to the first tee. As the swans glided by, impervious to the growing tension, Sari Pak lined up her second shot to the 14th green. It looked good. The ball stopped almost on command. This was for birdie, and to be in the lead for the first time this day. Now, Jenny Shasiraporn would have to stage a comeback to stop Sari Pak from walking off with her second consecutive major title of the year. But on the next hole, Pak bogey.
Her father grimaced, and his daughter's shoulders sagged. They were still tied, coming to the par four finishing hole. This was where Pox Drive landed, and without socks and shoes, but with plenty of courage, she hit the ball out. Caddy, Jeff Cable, pulled her up and out, and she got ready to move on. Now from 148 yards out of the rough, but with a good angle into the green. A marvelous golf shot, landing 18 feet below the hole and giving her a real chance at saving Paul. The two gallant competitors marched up to the 18th hole, the emotions churning inside, not visible on the outside. Two pair of eyes were better than one for her third shot, as former President George Bush watched. Jenny Shasiraporn could win the championship with this birdie chip. But the ball raced past the hole a good 12 feet, and she knew she had made a grave mistake. Sari Pock was searching for the right line on her par putt. But she came up well short, and father and daughter agonized together. Again, Jenny Shasiraporn had a chance to win with this 12-foot par putt. Oh, so close. After 90 holes, there was still no champion. Shasiraporn tidied up for both. So did Pac. And it was on to the first sudden death playoff in the U.S. Women's Open history. Both made par on the 10th hole, and it was on to the 92nd hole of the championship. Jenny Shasiraporn putted first. 20 footer for birdie. It never moved. Now all she could do was stand aside and watch. Sari Pock from 18 feet for birdie and the championship. Dead center. And finally, Sari Pock allowed herself to smile, getting a big hug from her exuberant father. The longest U.S. Women's Open in history was over and won by the youngest champion ever. Tears of joy flowed as Siri Pak became the first to win consecutive majors since Meg Mallon in 1991. But there were no losers today. And then, first slow answer, runner up and big show. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed on, you know, a couple of things, but you know, that's not, that's probably not what I'm going to carry out of today. I'm going to, um, you know, remember all the good things that happened because some of the, you know, even like the putt on 18 yesterday, I wouldn't have been even in the playoff had it not gone in. So I'm really um, fortunate for what happened and where, I, where I've gotten to this week. Still, there can be only one Women's Open champion, and this year it was Sari Pop. I don't know how to feel. I cannot talk, but... I'm really happy. Then she's a really great player. That's why I play, I don't know, this is the first time I play with amateur here, but she's a really great player. After I make that board, I had a little cry because that today is really tough, and this week is really tough for me. And I try, I do my best this week, but finally I win US Open. Lisa Lott Neumann's miss on the 18th hole had been the only thing between the Swede making it a three-way playoff. Despite her final round problems, qualifier Vari Mackay had to be pleased with her top 10 finish in her U.S. Women's Open debut. Sweden's Helen Alfredson continued the strong international presence on the leaderboard. 
Donna Andrews was in a group at 14 over. And Kari Webb was at 16 over, a frustrating result for the Australian star.